a review of the budget reconciliation bill. The committee has been hearing testimony all day on the bill, which makes changes in taxes and entitlements in order to meet overall budget goals. Uh, and ask that the appropriate waivers be given. Mm -hmm. Again, we, uh, we debated these uh, at length earlier in the day, as a matter of fact, earlier this morning, I believe. And uh, so I think you all know the issues. All in favor of the uh, three amendments in block say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. Nay. Oh. And the amendments are not agreed to. Uh, roll call, please. Roll call. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Uh, will it? No. 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 Yes. No. The clerk will announce the results. And the amendments are not agreed to. Are there further Mr. amendments Chairman, to the motion? I've got Mr. Amendment. Hall seeks recognition. Number uh, number seven. By itself? Uh, <laughs> yes. You sure? By itself, okay. I'm sure. Go proceed. You might get a couple on block amendments, but not this one. This is uh, nursing home regulation coverage. Uh, this is an amendment that I offer. Uh, it would continue the requirement that states provide nursing home services. It would also preserve that 1987 nursing home reforms, which protect nursing home patients from violations of their basic human rights such as freedom from abuse, neglect, and inappropriate uh, chemical and physical restraints. The amendment further guarantees that Alzheimer patients who are Medicaid eligible today will continue to have coverage. As drafted, the bill would lead to the eviction of some of these patients from nursing homes. I offer the amendment. No, I'm kicked her butt. No. Chairman concluded is. Uh, is there uh, any discussion on the gentleman's amendment? I would like to uh, just to submit for the record uh, the standards that are included in the bill. Uh, this is entitled Medigrant Standards for Nursing Facilities. Uh, and it goes on to say that standards shall be provided ensuring that nursing facilities care for residents in such a manner in such an environment as will promote maintenance and enhancement of the quality of life. And it goes on, I won't bother to state these, but uh, there are uh, some 17 which uh, have very stringent standards which the states must abide by. Uh, and I believe that it's taken care of. I'd be glad to give you a copy of this, Tony. And uh, I, I appreciate your and, uh, remarks. And I also, uh, without objection, would submit it for the record. And would somebody make us up about uh, 20 copies of this right away and, uh, we had for distribution? A we had testimony on this uh, when the Medicare was before us, and many people feel that the standards are just pretty much going to go out the windows. They're, they're going to have to be lowered. And the reason why they were lowered is because they feel a lot of nursing homes are probably going to have to close because more people, they feel, the people that testified and the way the bill is written, more people are going to have to give up their uh, home health care and be pushed into nursing homes. So what we're trying to do here through this amendment is restore what we have and to protect the people, uh, especially the patients. And uh, this came through testimony. It, it's, it's come through people in my district, people that have called my office. It, it came through the testimony we had on the hearing last week on Medicare. Well, again, I'll be glad to give you copies, uh, and I think it might uh, relieve some of your uh, anxieties about, uh, about the coverage. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, okay. as I said, I'm not going to debate. I concur highly with uh, my colleague on this matter. Very good. All those in favor of the Hall Amendment will say aye. 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 All aye. those opposed, nay. No. And the amendment is not agreed to. Roll Are there call. further? A roll call is requested. Chair. The clerk will call the roll. Will it? 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 Will it?
call votes yes, Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon votes. <laughs> and the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the uh, motion? Clerk well, will announce the results. I'm sorry. Uh, four yeas and nine days. I'm yeah. beginning to hear things. I thought so. I heard you uh, announce the results. <laughs> and the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further Chair, amendments? <laughs> Are there further amendments to the motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a, an amendment to the rule. And how many amendments are included? This will be just a solitary amendment. Just the one, all right. But very powerful. Number eight. <laughs> uh, the amendment would replace the committee formula which allocates new medical, new Medicaid block grants to the states uh, with the Senate Medicaid formula. This is a more flexible approach which gives states a choice between using 1994 or 1995 as a baseline. The bill before us requires states to use 1994 as the base year, as you know. Using 1994 or 1995 as a baseline. The bill before us requires states to use 1994 as the base year, as you know. We, That's it, Mr. Chairman. We have debated this at length. Uh, so I think we all understand the amendment. All those Mr. Chairman, may I uh, ask an inquiry? I heard this afternoon, Mr. Moakley, that there was a possibility that the Senate formula was beginning to waver on the question of the 94-95 uh, base year. Do you have any further information on that? I, I, don't, I know they're looking at it, but I don't have any specific information on this amendment. The, uh, I'm, very, I'm uh, obviously uh, tempted by the amendment. We had a good conversation with Ms. Meek right. about it. But the, the concern I have is that, uh, that the Senate, the way we're wording this, if the Senate is going to go uh, and, uh, and change it back, we're going to wet ourselves to something that we don't know uh, exactly what it is. Uh, and we're going to be taking action before they are. Well, if, your I... amendment, if your amendment said we use the 95 base year, uh, I would be much happier. Well, it's either or. But, but actually, I... You know, I have a great deal of respect for the gentleman, and, uh, you know, if we go around posturing ourselves on what we think the Senate's going to do, uh, nothing would ever happen. So I would like to insist on my amendments. Well, your Senate does, your amendment does posture us on the Senate. No, but I mean, if we, <laughs> this does, but as I say, if we were going to take into consideration every action that the Senate was going to take, we, we wouldn't get too much done up here. Oh, we've noticed that this year, actually. Mr. Uh, Mr. Moakley, um, I, for one, am having trouble following these amendments. Uh, whose amendment was this? Who, who, who testified? Terry Meek. Terry Meek, all right. Yeah. If, 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 if you Terry could, Meek flower, yeah. if you could uh, just identify who the sponsor of the amendment is, I think it would help some of us recall the debate during this 12-hour period that's just passed. Um, all those in favor of the uh, Moakley Meek amendment will say aye. All those opposed, no. 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 And the amendment is not agreed to. Roll call, Mr. Chairman. The roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Well, no. Well, I'm voting on Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes on no. Mr. Goss. Aye. Yeah. Mr. Goss votes aye. Mr. Leonard. No. Mr. Linder votes no. Mr. Price. No. Mr. Price votes no. Mr. Diaz Villar. Yes. Diaz Villar votes yes. Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. McGinnis votes no. no. Mr. Waldholt. No. Mr. Waldholt votes no. Mr. Mobley. Yes. Mobley votes yes. Mr. Bielinson? Yes. Mr. Bielinson votes yes. Mr. Frost? No. Mr. Frost votes no. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? Hi. No, no. Chairman Solomon votes no. Yes, sir. Chairman Solomon votes no. Clerk will announce the results. Four got four more pages. And the uh, amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the resolution? Tony. Yes, Tony. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I have, uh, I think, I think I have five in a row here. Five so, in a row? A couple of which are in Would block. You just, are they nine, 10, 11, and? Well, the first one, sir, yes, is number nine. Yes. And I, I don't remember whose this was. Well, it's OK, but you're okay. offering yes. which ones? Nine, yes. 10, 11? Well, at this point, just number nine. Oh, just number nine? Yes, sir. OK. OK. And you, you don't remember whose it was? That's correct. But well, we're, we're looking it up for you. It was left on his You door. can vote against it no matter whose it was, <laughs> if you'd like. Well, Mrs. Will it make a difference? Well, Mrs. seriously, no. It Mrs. really would help us to recall if you Mrs. do know. If you don't know, it's fine. Well, Mrs. No, Schroeder testified on this Yes, one. she did, but I'm not sure it was hers. Or I don't see her name on here. This was the EITC one. You know, you, you know the... Okay. Well, continue. Thanks. 
Um, this, this amendment would modify the Gingrich substitute to delete the portion of the bill that guts the earned income tax credit for working families. We, we continue to find it difficult to believe that the Republican leadership would, would cut such a program that offers help to working Americans stay independent and off public welfare, while at the same time giving a tax break to, to wealthy Americans. It's an unfair uh, policy in the extreme, and we think it would be this is a most worthwhile amendment. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Chairman, it, it, it's also true that the EITC, which started a few years ago at a $2 billion program, is now in the $20 billion range and is rife with fraud. And the only efforts we're trying to make is to get fraud and get it back to low-income families, get it back where it belonged. And I, and I, oppose, uh, I oppose the amendment. The, um, You've heard the arguments. Uh, all those in favor of the Bielenson Amendment, say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Nay. Aye. And the amendment is not agreed to. Have a roll call, Mr. And a roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Quillen? No. Mr. Quillen votes no. Mr. Dreyer? No. Mr. Dreyer votes no. Mr. Goss? No. Mr. Goss votes no. Mr. Linder? No. Mr. Linder votes no. Mr. Price? No. Mr. Price votes no. Mr. Diaz Villar? 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 No. Yes. Yes. Mr. Bielenson votes yes. Mr. Frost? Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon votes no. <coughs> the clerk will announce the results. Uh, four yeas, nine nays. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Chairman, uh, amendment number 10, which I believe is Mr. Miller's. Okay. 11, you mean? Are you going to offer any of these in block? Yeah, I will, but this Solomon. doesn't happen. I've got... Hang in there. Okay. We've got we, we two more 10. individually and a two in block. We just did 10. We just did nine. Yeah, we did ten. What did we, we just did nine. Uh, ten is up if you want to offer it. Thanks. Okay. Ten. Um, this amendment, Mr. Chairman, would modify the Gingrich substitute to, to delete the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge oil leasing provisions. Without arguing one way or the other on this, it is a difficult and a sensitive and important issue, and one which we believe should not be stuffed into a reconciliation bill, but debated on its own with people having a chance to. Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Lender. Uh, let me. 30 years ago this year, I worked on a pipeline in Alaska. You worked where? I worked on a pipeline in Alaska. Oh, it's still leaking? I this is nothing between the Cook Inlet, <laughs> Between the Cook Inlet and Swanson River, and we have built a pipeline. We've gotten millions of barrels of oil. Um, and now they're trying to explore for oil in an area as large as that property on which sits Dull uh, Dulles Airport. And for us to sit here and say we know better than they, first of all, the entire Alaska state government budget depends on these oil revenues. And for us to know better than they strikes me as the same as to tell people in Colorado that they can't have skiing on these pristine hills or the people in California that they shouldn't allow surfing on those wonderful waves. Uh, I, I just think that for them to explore and to seek a 30 million barrels of oil if they're there, and find a way to make them available is, is wise policy, and I oppose the amendment. It's not that simple, but I understand if, uh, the gentleman's position. And I, well, my only argument is that it shouldn't be in this bill. We should be able to get at it and amend it and talk about it by itself on the floor. Mr. Bielenson uh, and uh, members, we, we've gone through 10 amendments. And I've, uh, I've been looking through the, uh, the Democrat uh, substitute that is going to be offered, and that is uh, uh, Trying to find the number of the bill. That is H.R. 2530. And I don't find any of these amendments that you've offered uh, in the, the Democrat substitute. Are these provisions what, aren't in the substitute. Why are they not in there? No, no. I think the answer, Mr. Chairman, is that, that most of the things we're trying to delete will not be found in the Democratic alternative. No, substitute. I think they are almost all in. The, no, the, the ones you're trying to delete are in the, um, in, in the so-called blue dog no. No? No, no, no. Well, the reason you're getting me here, Mr. Chairman, because they're not in the other one. No, I don't, uh, I don't agree with you. I think, um, well. Well, to the extent it applies to that, well, I'd take it out of that, too. you take it out of that, too. All right. right. Well, that's good. Okay. Why don't you proceed? I did. Are you uh, through? Please vote. Okay. All those in favor of the Bielens Amendment will say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. And the amendment is not agreed to. Please have and a roll call, Mr. Chairman. Roll call, roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Quillen? Quillen votes no, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Goss. No. Mr. Goss votes no, Mr. Linder. No. Mr. Linder votes no, Mr. Price. No. Price votes no, Mr.
again if there's no wall holes. Uh, wall holes, no. Chair votes remotely. Yes. Remotely votes yes. Mr. Bielans? Yes. Mr. Bielans votes yes. Mr. Frost? Yes. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon votes no. Clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine nays. Amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bielanson. Um, I offer. Um, Number 11, I move the committee make an order of the amendment offered by Representative uh, Miller of California as the amendment be given this appropriate waivers. This amendment would void the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge leasing authority if the state of Alaska sues to enforce a 90-10 revenue split. Mr. You, uh, Mr. Linder. I, I would just like to ask the gentleman if... <clears throat> is, is the gentleman offering an amendment to take away the leasing authority for the state if it sues to enforce a legitimate contract? Yes. That ought to be defeated. The, uh, all those in favor of the amendment will say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Aye. And the amendment is not agreed to. Roll Are call, there, please, Mr. Chairman. And a roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Willard? No. Willard votes no, Mr. Dreyer? No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Gott? No. Mr. Gott votes no, Mr. Linder? No. Mr. Linder votes no, Mr. Price? No. Mr. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz Villard? No. Diaz Villard votes no, Mr. McGinnis? No. Mr. McGinnis votes no, Mrs. Walholz? No. Mr. Walholz votes no, Mr. Mopley? Yes. Mr. Mopley votes yes, Mr. Bielans? Yes. Mr. Bielans votes yes, Mr. Frost? Yes. No. Clerk will announce the results. Yeah. Four days, nine days. And the amendment is not agreed to. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bielanson. Oh, okay. I move that the rule, this is an on block proposition. I move okay. that the rule be amended by adding the amendments on block number 12, 13, and 35, and ask that the amendments be given the appropriate waivers. And 35? Yes, sir. That 35, um, I don't know. Whose it was, but had to do with federal oil and gas royalty okay. provisions. They're all similar. Um, first one, number 12, would place an 8% royalty on hard rock minerals mined from federal lands and increase the mine, <coughs> excuse me, mining claim holding fee. It would save American taxpayers more than $540 million over the next seven years. This amendment is identical to the bill that passed the House last Congress by a vote of 316 to 108. The Second Amendment uh, would modify the Gingrich substitute to delete the mining provisions. The House has registered its overwhelming opposition to these provisions on three separate occasions during the current Congress. We should not be placing these provisions in the bill where the will of the majority of members will be bypassed. And finally, on, on number 35, the amendment would modify the Gingrich substitute to delete the federal oil and gas royalty provisions. CBO has estimated that this provision will cost the American taxpayers $60 million over seven years. Not only a bad provision, but a revenue loser, and does not belong either in this reconciliation mm -hmm. bill. I believe that all members on both sides were here uh, early this morning when, uh, when these three amendments were debated. And I think we all understand them. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. And the amendment is not agreed to. A roll right. call, please, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and the clerk will call the roll on the end block amendments. Willen? Uh, uh, Willen votes no, Mr. Dreyer? No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Gott? No. Mr. Gott votes no, Mr. Linder? Aye. Mr. Linder votes aye, Mr. Price? No. Mr. Price votes no, Mr. Gott? No. Mr. Gott votes no, Mr. Linder? Aye. Mr. Linder votes aye, Mr. Price? No. Mr. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz Villar? No. Mr. Diaz Villar votes no, Mr. Guinness? No. Mr. Guinness no. votes no, Mr. Walpole? No. Mr. Walpole votes no, Mr. Walpole votes no, Mr. votes no, Mr. Walpole 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 votes no, Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Cross. Yes. Cross votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon. <coughs> Clerk will announce the results. Five, eight, eight, eight. And the Mr. amendments Chairman. are not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the resolution? I have one more at this point. Uh, on block Bielson. amendment. Uh, I move that the rule be amended by adding the amendments on block number 14, 15, and 16, and ask that the amendments be given the appropriate waivers. Uh, First Amendment number 14 would eliminate national forest timber sales that cost the government more than the revenue generated. GAO recently reported that during the FY92-94 period of three years, the Forest Service spent $1.3 billion administering timber sales but deposited only $300 million in the Treasury. This provision would have saved the American taxpayers about $1 billion over the last three years had it been in effect. Number 15 from Mr. Miller. Uh, would apply the grazing fee level contained in the bill to small ranchers. Small ranchers are those permittees who graze 500 or less animal unit months per grazing year. All of the permittees would pay market rate fees based on that charge in comparable non-federal lands. And finally, number 16 from Mr. Miller of, of California would require corporate farms which grow s surplus crops 
to pay the full cost of reclamation project irrigation water would save the American taxpayers over $330 million over the next five years. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You heard the amendments in block by the gentleman from uh, California. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed nay. No. And the amendments are not agreed to. Please give us a roll call vote, Mr. Right. Chairman. Another roll call. Okay, please. please. Clerk will call the roll. Yeah. No. Mr. Quillen votes no, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Goss. No. Mr. Goss votes no, Mr. Leonard. No. Mr. Leonard votes no, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Goss 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 votes no, M
Yes. Mobley votes yes. Mr. Bielans? Yes. Mr. Bielans votes yes. Mr. Frost? Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Paul votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon votes no. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the resolution? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move the committee make and order the amendment offered by Representative Emerson and ask that the amendment be given the appropriate waivers. The amendment would result in the same in the same amount of savings as the farm provisions which are being inserted in the reconciliation bill. The amendment leaves in place current farm commodity programs and achieves most of its savings by increasing the percentage of unpaid acreage from 15 percent to 30 percent. The amendment eliminates the government price support program for butter and powdered milk but retains the, pr the support price for cheese and extends the national system of milk marketing orders. Mr. Chairman, the uh Mr. Chairman? Mr. Linder. Uh, the, the Emerson Combes program, which also could not get enough votes to pass in the Agriculture Committee, really doesn't make any revolutionary moves toward market forces in agriculture. And even though the Roberts proposal of uh, Freedom Farm didn't get the sufficient votes to pass, it was revolutionary in moving away from paying people for not farming. And I really think that we should support that and oppose this amendment. I might also point out that at 5 o'clock this afternoon, I think Mr. Emerson and Mr. Combest uh, held a press conference saying that they were going to support uh, the legislation without their amendment in it and that uh, they were going to work to try to uh, uh, make corrections in it as we move through the legislative process. Mr. Chairman, just as a matter Mr. of record, did this committee Johnson. didn't receive such an amendment from either Mr. Emerson or Mr. Combest, did they? No. I didn't think we'd received it. I didn't recall it. I was not in the room all day. Thank you. Hmm. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of the Frost Amendment will say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. No. And uh, the amendment is not agreed roll to. Roll call, Mr. And a Chairman. roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Willis? Oh. Willis votes no. Dreyer? No. Dreyer votes no. Mr. Goss? Uh, no. Mr. Goss votes no. Mr. Linder? No. Mr. Linder votes no. Mr. Price? No. Price votes no. Mr. Diaz Villar? No. Mr. Diaz Villar votes no. Mr. McGill? No. Guinness votes no. Mr. Walthold? No. Mr. Walthold votes no. Mr. Mobley? Yes. Mobley votes yes. Mr. Wheelan? Yes. Mr. Wheelan votes yes. Mr. Frost? Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes. Mr. Solomon? No. Mr. Solomon votes yes. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the resolution? Well, the clerk will announce the results. I'm sorry. Four yeas, nine days. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the resolution? Mr. <coughs> Chairman. Mr. Hall. Mr. Chairman, I have amendment number 19. Uh, this was an amendment by Mr. Hamilton. <clears throat> this goes to the area of the, uh, of the bill dealing with uh, consolidating agencies such as AID, USIA, and ACDA into the State Department. And uh, I think this is very bad policy. This uh, takes a department, uh, an agency like AID, which I think has been tremendously effective in uh, doing their best to keep politics out of foreign decisions based on uh, the tremendous amount of help they give uh, in humanitarian aid to the poorest nations of the world. If you take them and you, and you take AID and consolidate it and put it under the State Department, I think what you'll get on humanitarian aid is you'll get a lot more political decisions and uh, that's not a good thing. That's, uh, that's a bad thing as far as I'm concerned. Secondly, it's my understanding that the primary author of this reorganization legislation, Chairman Helms in the Senate, he's backed away from his insistence that USAID may be merged into the State Department. And probably because of the bird rule in the Senate, it's very doubtful that this is going to pass anyway. So I offer this amendment to delete, delete it out I think these agencies are important. I think they ought to be separate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Tony, uh, you know, uh, I mentioned earlier I met with uh, Secretary of State Warren Christopher and uh, Madeleine Albright and others discussing the, the, the uh, deplorable situation of the United Nations and how that uh, uh, bureaucracy, uncontrolled by anyone, has just run mm -hmm. rampant. And, uh, uh, a lot of that can be said uh, as well about uh, some of these programs, and uh, the full intent of this, uh, this legislation is to fold it into the Department of State where they will be responsible to someone. And uh, I, for one, I, I know your concerns about it, but I think 
uh, we will continue the programs as they are, but there will be more accountability. I think that's uh, the whole, what we're trying to do with this whole uh, reconciliation bill is to restructure the federal government to make it accountable to the American taxpayer. And that's well, why let the me say, Just let me say, Mr. Chairman, yep. Brian Atwood, head of AID, is, a, is an excellent administrator. He's extremely honest and very right. caring pe person. He reports to the President and to the Secretary of State. And, uh, but it's nice to have that part separated, not to fold humanitarian care under the State Department, because you're going to get decisions like we had in Egypt, like we have in Egypt and El Salvador, where they take our PL4A money, PL 480 food and they give it to cattle and that's a political decision and uh, if you keep this separate you're not going to get those kind of decisions. Well, I don't think that kind of action would be condoned by either a Republican or a Democratic administration in the, in the State Department but you've heard the arguments uh, all those in favor say aye, aye. all those aye. opposed nay nay and the amendment is not agreed to. Roll call Mr. Chairman. And a roll call is requested the clerk will call the roll. No, 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 the clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine nays. Mr. Chairman, I and have... And the amendment uh, is not agreed to. Mr. Hall. I have two more amendments. Uh, the first one is amendment number... Are they in block? Uh, no, I have an amendment towards the end that I'll in block, but not these two. They're going to be separate. Okay. This is number 20, and uh, what I'm trying to do is restore the $500 child tax credit. This amendment would modify the, uh, the uh, gingrich Kasich provision that reduces the contract with America child tax credit from $500 down to $365. Uh, the Republican leadership insists that the tax cut go to the richest of the rich. The Republicans admit that they can't afford to give everyone the child tax credit. The poor were dropped out right from the start when the leadership refused to, to make the credit refundable. So to the corporations, they give refundable tax credits in this bill, but to the poor children, they pretty much give the back of their hand. So I offer this amendment. Mr. Chairman? You've uh, heard the arguments, Mr. Uh, Dreyer. Let me just say that, uh, unfortunately, we're going down the road of class warfare, and we happen to uh, believe that to begin ratcheting that down would be a real mistake, and uh, I think that Everyone should be included here, and I think that it would be a mistake to proceed with this amendment, and I urge opposition to it, Mr. Chairman. If there's no further uh, arguments for or against the amendment, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. No. And the amendment is not agreed to, call, and a Chairman. roll call is requested. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. And the amendment is not agree or uh, clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine nay. The amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Yes. Uh, Mr. Hall. Mr. Chairman, amendment number 21, this amendment uh, would preserve the contract with America increase in the Social Security earnings limit. This is an amendment, of course, to the rule, and it would modify the Gingrich Kasich substitute to delete the provision of the bill that strikes the contract with America item increase in the Social Security earnings limitation. One of the few items in the contract on America that had some merit was the provision that increased the amount of money senior citizens receiving Social Security could earn without decreasing their monthly checks. What I'm simply doing in this amendment is inserting into the, into the reconciliation bill or an amendment that does the same thing that uh, we voted for in the contract with America. 
it's deleted out of the bill that's presently before us. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Dreyer first and then Mr. Linder. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me uh, just say that we are all very sympathetic with this. Many of us have been strong supporters of lifting the outside earnings limit for a number of years, and uh, it clearly is very inequitable. The problem is that the entire reconciliation bill could be brought down in the other body uh, with a point of order, and that's the reason that it was left out here, but they are planning to continue to address it, so there is still very strong support from the Republican leadership uh, for uh, this package, and if this amendment were to be make an order, made an order, it would clearly be a, a vehicle to eliminate the entire reconciliation package, and that's the reason I urge a strong no vote on it. Mr. Linder. Uh, Mr. Chairman, first of all, I, I find it hard to believe that my friend from Ohio thinks that that's the only item in the contract that had merit since One nine of the... Few. Since nine of the ten provisions passed with large numbers of Democrat votes, but I have never seen the, this amendment. Uh, has this amendment been presented to us? Do we have it? Do, does it refer to which area of the Kasich substitute that they're going to strike? Uh, where is the amendment? I, I think we thought it was such a good amendment. We we wanted the chance no, to talk no, about, no, somebody, about it. So we're, well, we're I'm, I'm not the least bit surprised that you think it's good. I am surprised that you think it's there. It's where is the amendment? Uh, Gentlemen, I'd be this, happy to help. This was filed with the other amendments. Where? We've looked for it. No, I don't believe no. so. No. Oh, I'm sorry. It was filed with the clerk. With the clerk of the committee. There's no amendments here to this effect. There's no references to the point of the bill, is what I'm saying. And, well, and you you're making a wonder. With your, check with your clerk. We, we've checked with all the folks who have amendments. We can't find. My point is, you're making a, an excellent political point. You're making a bad, a bad uh, legislative point because you don't have an amendment. Well, you know what I'm trying to do. We sure, I know what you're trying to do, Tony. You're very much, very much in favor of it, and uh, it's an amendment. Look, we get one vote on this bill. This bill. We get two. We get two. We get two. Oh, two. Oh, I'm sorry. We get two votes. Which is one more on than we had last. It's going to change the whole That's government. The and you haven't accepted any amendments that we've offered tonight. We're probably going to offer 40. So we really don't get to debate anything that we really want to talk about. So there's, there are some things in here that we felt that we wanted to offer, bring up, that you've already passed and said that you believe in. But when we offer the amendment to the, to the bill, you say, well, this is not I'm, a good idea. Well, the General, we, we all said that this is a great idea. We've also we support it. this idea strongly, well, but we don't want to bring down the entire reconciliation but bill. But where is the amendment? Because of the prospect of a point of order being raised. Jerry, I uh, the, uh, the, that amendment. the amendment is filed. Uh, I think we've, uh, we understand the amendment, Mr. Uh, Goss. Mr. Chairman, just by point of clarification, isn't H. Con Res 109, which is provided for in the rule that Mr. Quillen had read, address exactly this subject as well? That's a, that's yes, a sense of Congress. I understand it does. And it's, and it's in the future. It doesn't have anything to do with this bill. Uh, it means a great deal uh, to me, and I think it's in the very near future. Uh, I take the, uh, the leadership's word on this that we're going to see this. I care very much about this, and we're going to see this. As Mr. Dreyer explained, we're, it's a technical hang-up we've got because the other body apparently uh, doesn't have the, uh, the same uh, blessings of rules and order that we do here. They have a different approach, uh, and this will allow us to get it done a different way. And I would be very glad to have the gentleman's uh, support when we get it. And if we don't get it, I will be helping the gentleman yell for it. And we would also hope the gentleman would vote for the resolution when it comes up on the floor first thing tomorrow. The, re the whole reconciliation bill? No, no, no. The resolution, uh, the sense of Congress resolution doing no, exactly what you're of offering. Uh, yeah. You've heard the arguments in favor of, and against the, uh, the amendment. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. And the amendment roll call, is not agreed please. to. A roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Quillen? Quillen votes no, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Linder. No. Mr. Linder votes no, Mr. Price. No. Mr. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz Millard. No. Mr. Diaz Millard votes no, Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. McGinnis votes no, Mrs. Walpole. No. Mrs. Walpole votes no, Mr. Mobley. Yes. Mr. Mobley votes 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 yes. Frost? Yes. Frost votes yes. All? Yes. All votes yes. Chairman Collins? No. Chairman Collins votes no. And the clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine days. Uh, the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mowgli. Mr. Chairman, the next amendment is what was uh, an amendment that was filed by Mr. Henchy. It uh, uh, reads 22 on your uh, page. 
22? 22. Uh, my amendment would strike the provision that makes the repeal of the corporate al alternative minimum, alternate minimum tax a refundable tax credit. It's bad enough the Ways and Means Committee voted to essentially repeal the alternative uh, minimum tax. The Gingrich case substitute goes even one step further and gives those corporations a refundable tax credit. The same Republican leadership that told us that working families shouldn't get a refundable child tax credit can't wait to give corporations a refundable corporate welfare tax credit. Mr. Kasich came here and testified about how his bill goes after corporate welfare. I'm sure that Mr. Kasich believes we should eliminate corporate welfare, but this bill adds to it, and this is the worst source. There's only one reason for an alternative tax, uh, minimum tax. This tax was enacted in response to embarrassing stories year after year about Fortune 500 companies that paid no taxes at all. I think it's shameful that you are increasing taxes on 8 million working families so that the most profitable companies in America can get away without paying one cent of taxes. Mr. Chairman, that's my amendment. Um, is there, uh, in the amendment, do they replace the lost revenue uh, as an offset any place, do you know? No, but we could just, just uh, cut back on the taxes, period. Yeah. This, is, this is a revenue loser to start with. You've heard the arguments in favor and against the resolution. All of the, uh, the amendment, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed, nay. No. Nay, and the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the resolution? I'd like a roll call, Mr. Chairman. A roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Uh, we'll let those know, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Goss. No. Mr. Goss votes no, Mr. Linder. No. Mr. Linder votes no, Mr. Price. No. Mr. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz-Balart. No. Mr. Diaz-Balart votes no, Mr. No. Mr. Kenneth votes no, Mrs. Walpole. No. Yes. 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 No. Solomon votes no. The uh, clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine nays. The amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the rule. This amendment would modify the substitute to delete the repeal of the Service Contract Act. For 30 years, this law has protected wages for excuse, government. Excuse me, Mr. What? Berkeley, which number are you what on? What number are you? Number 23. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You got the wrong speech. Would you like to go uh, ahead, Mr. Mokley? We will we'll recognize him afterwards. Oh, I'm uh, I'll, What happened was I had an amendment I was going to submit, but I, I decided not out. to. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Which Mr. one Frost. was that? You're, you're uh, exiting out 23? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mr. Frost, you're recognized. I move that the rule be amended by adding the amendments in block number 24, 25, 26, 28, and 29. And ask that the amendments be given the appropriate waivers. These amendments were, uh, were debated earlier today. I think you all understand them. They are in block. All those in favor of the in block amendments offered by Mr. Frost will say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. Nay. And the amendments are not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the uh, motion? Yes. Mr. Sorry. Frost? Oh, and I have roll call. I'm sorry. Yeah. Roll call, you're too late. No, that's all right. <laughs> clerk will call the clerk will call the roll. Yes. Mobley votes yes, Mr. Beelins. Yes. Mr. Beelins votes yes, Mr. Frost. Yes. Frost votes yes, Mr. Hall. Yes. Hall votes yes, Chairman Solomon. No. Chairman Solomon votes no. And the clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine And days. the amendments are not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Yes. Mr. Frost. Mr. Chairman, this is number 27. I have an amendment to the rule. The amendment would modify the substitute to exempt the National Weather Service from a 25% reduction in funding placed on programs administered by NOAA. Such funding reductions would devastate the Weather Service. The Weather Service has concluded that under this cut proposal, its funding will be cut in half by 2001. These reductions are bad policy and do not serve the public safety interests of the American people.
Can we stop floods in Florida if we vote for this? Gentleman yield. Mr. Frost, uh, if, if you might just with, yeah. withhold for a minute. Uh, if you don't have the money, you can't afford the, product, the programs, and we don't have the money. And uh, this is what we're doing almost across the board. Rather than cut programs for the truly needy, we are trying to reduce the size and the power of the federal government, and that's exactly what this amendment does. It falls in line with all the others. Mr. Chairman. Hey, Mr. Moakley. Uh, I hesitate to get into the debate, but <clears throat> it's all right. I happened to visit one of the north places in Florida, and there were, this was a few years back, and they were cannibalizing equipment so that they'd have one plane that, that can handle it. And you, right down there in the middle of the hurricanes, and these people do great work down there and, it, and for very short money. And they supply not only the United States, but the world with this weather. In Central America, and I just think it would be, you know. Does the world pitch in and help pay for it? Well, I don't know if they're doing it. I think they do sell some if, if the gentleman will yield, I agree. They do a marvelous job. Yeah. And I am very thankful because the Florida evacuation programs defend on good, accurate, oh, early notice. And that's what the program is doing. They're consolidating using new technology. And that's what this program is designed to do, to get rid of the old, the obsolete, the horse and buggy, and consolidate. Right. We use the frost warning services. We use the uh, early warning very well. But the fact of the matter is uh, we've got more to this. And a lot of people think that if you've got a good weather service, they can stop the hurricane from hitting or the flood from flooding. And, and life just doesn't work that way. How much money are we talking about on this? How much money? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much money, but I know that right now I've satisfied myself uh, with the quality of the service and the amount of the service that we need, because I've asked those questions, obviously, in Florida, because you're right. It's important. How, how much money are we talking about? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, are you saying that, Porter? Porter, are you saying that it's, uh, you think it's adequate at this time? I, I, I mean, I'm not trying to... No, honestly, uh, I, I have, I've asked the questions about this. It matters to us, and uh, I believe that the redesign of the service is going to give us a better quality for less cost. I truly believe that. Mr. Chairman, the, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, in favor of the resolution. Mr. Chairman, yeah. take a $200 million cut. The, 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 the amount of money is not as relevant to me as the ability of the service to get early, accurate information, which I am told they will be able to do and save money. I'm delighted to hear as much as $200 million. I remember years ago, if I may, Mr. Chairman, when, when hurricanes were not as prevalent, and there was a big one that came that altered the Okeechobee Swamp. With, with the outer eye of the hurricane come by, and, and then there was a comet. People got up on the bridge to watch what happened. Then the other end came and swept them all overboard. And it was, this is when you were just a baby. I was going to say, this is a little before my time. I think it was probably around 38. Just, just, just in fact, I was a baby. to be exactly. 32, yes. Well, I guess right. it was in the Marine Corps at the time, standing guard. <laughs> no, no, I lived in Okeechobee, Florida at the time. Did you really? That can't be true, because sure Marines do. can't stop hurricanes. We know that. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman. And just uh, so you'll know, after that hurricane, uh, Lake Okeechobee is a bowl. It's not a deep lake. It's, uh, it's just like a bowl, and, and it's 60 miles long and 40 miles wide. And when the hurricane hit back then, there was no dike around it, which Claude Pepper, by the way, helped to get the funds to build it after the hurricane took place. But um, it literally drove the water like you were shaking a bowl. Uh. It just drove the water out of Lake Okeechobee, and it drowned it in the city of Okeechobee, population 1,500 people. Uh. It drowned people, cattle, and uh, pets, everything. It was a Mr. Chairman, disaster. Uh, I would only add that uh, we have a little different problem in my part of the country. We have tornadoes. And uh, the Weather Service provides a very valid function in uh, giving a warning when a tornado is heading uh, straight toward your house. This doesn't stop the tornadoes or the earthquakes. All it does is gives you good information. I would only point out to the gentleman that uh, it gives you adequate warning. And uh, I would insist on my amendment. Gentlemen, we're in the 13th hour of this, uh, of this meeting, and uh, we would like to proceed as uh, expeditiously as possible. If we could have a vote on this uh, amendment, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay, nay, no. and the amendment is not agreed to. And a roll call, and a Mr. roll Chairman. call is requested on amendment number 27 by Mr. Frost, offered by whom? Mr. Frost. No, no, who was the original sponsor? We don't know. No, no, right. I don't have that information. The records show we don't Mr. know Glass, who offered the amendment. Clerk will yeah. call the roll. The so weatherman knows. <laughs> Mr. Quillen? Quillen votes no. Mr. Dreyer? No. What is Mr. Dreyer doing over there? Mr. Goss? Mr. 
that's what it's still is. Yeah. 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 Lender code is still is, right? Yeah. It's price code still is. Mr. Diaz, I want to get it. Yes, price code still is. Charles Brown was going to get it. Okay. Small code. George? Small code. Votes no. Yes. 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 Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall, you want? Yeah. How would you like to vote? Yeah. Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solid. No. no. Chairman Clerk will announce the results. Uh -huh. no, and the does not agree to. How many more amendments uh, do we uh, uh, expect votes on? A few. Probably half. We get there. Half a dozen more. Uh, are there further amendments okay. to the resolution, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Uh, Bielanson. Ten. 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 But Ten. I think there'll be a couple on block. Number thirty-one, Mr. Chairman. I have an amendment to the rule that would have modified the Republican substitute to delete the park concessions provisions. Last Congress, the, ha the House voted 386 to 30 for a market-oriented approach to concession reform. The provisions in the base text give an unfair advantage to current concessionaires and provide little competition for concession contract renewals. These are not <coughs> sensible provisions, should be deleted from the bill, and with them out of there, we think, and, and with doing it correctly, we can make a lot more money uh, for the taxpayers to to support the, the public uh, Tony, are you talking 31 or 30? 31. Uh, we're not doing 30. Okay. Thanks. Only, I like 30, except that we didn't think it was proper to put it into the bill. This is 31. You heard the uh, the amendment. All those in favor of Bielenson Amendment number 31 will say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. And the amendment roll, is not agreed to. Call, please, and a roll call is requested. Clerk will call the roll. Roland votes no, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Gass. No. Mr. Gass votes no, Mr. Lender. No. Mr. Lender votes no, Ms. Price. No. Ms. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz Villar. No. Diaz Villar votes no, Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. McGinnis votes no, Mrs. Walpole. No. Mrs. Walpole votes no, Mr. Mobley. Yes. Mr. Mobley votes yes, Mr. Wheelins. Yes. Wheelins votes yes, Mr. Frost. Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes, Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes, Chairman Solomon. No. The clerk will announce the results. The amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? I have one, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bielens. The amendment would modify, it's number 32, uh, would modify the Republican substitute to delete the ski area's sales provisions. I know that with our friend from, from Colorado has an understanding with respect to the areas in Colorado. This would go beyond that. This is not Mr. Skaggs' amendment. Um, well, you understand it. I think we all understand the amendment. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. No. Nay. And the amendment is not agreed to. I'd like the roll call, please. And a roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. No. No. Mr. Quillen votes no. Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no. Mr. Bass. No. Mr. Bass votes no. Mr. Linder. No. Mr. Linder votes no. Mr. Price. No. Ms. Price votes no. Mr. diaz Villar. No. Mr. diaz Villar votes no. Mr. McGinnis. Yes. Mr. McGinnis votes yes. Mrs. Wall votes no. Wall votes no. Mr. Mobley? Yes. Mr. Mobley votes yes. Mr. Bielens? Yes. Mr. Bielens votes yes. Mr. Frost? Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. And the amendment is not agreed to. The clerk will announce the results. Five days, eight days. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Bielenson. <coughs> Number 34, sir. Please. Uh, I have an amendment uh, that would modify the, the Republican uh, substitute to delete the Ward Valley California land transfer provisions. This unconditional transfer of federal lands to the state of California for a low-level radioactive waste disposal site will occur while numerous questions of safety have not yet been resolved. The National Academy of Sciences has recommended additional tests of the site before construction begins. It's improper, we believe, and premature for this land transfer to proceed until after those tests are completed. Let me just say parenthetically, Mr. Chairman, this is a, a matter of, of some controversy back, back home. And it seems to me it's not the proper kind of, this is not the proper kind of bill in which to insert it. It, it deserves some attention by itself. Where, it's uh, where is this located? It's in Southern California over near the Arizona border. Near your district? No, not too near. Whose district is it? Who, who offered the amendment? Sorry, I don't know. You did. Well, I just did, but I don't know who did originally. Right. Okay. Okay, I think we understand the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay, nay, and the amendment is not agreed roll to. Roll call, please, Mr. And Chairman. a roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll again. Mr. Quillen? No. votes no, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Goss. No. Mr. Goss votes no, Mr. Lender. No. Mr. Lender votes no, Ms. Price. No. Ms. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz-Villard. No. Mr. 
Diaz Ballard votes no. Mr. McGinnis? No. Mr. McGinnis votes no. Mrs. Walpole? No. Mrs. Walpole votes no. Mr. Mobley? Yes. Mr. Mobley votes yes. Mr. Bielens? Yes. Mr. Bielens votes yes. Mr. Frost? Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon votes no. The clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine nays. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hall. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have uh, two amendments, uh, 37 and 38, that I'd like to uh, put them together on block. They have, uh, they were introduced, I believe, by Mr. Clay. And uh, one of the amendments uh, has to do with uh, modifying uh, the substitute, the Gingrich substitute, to delete the provision in the bill which eliminates the student interest subsidy on student uh, loans during the six-month grace period. That's the one amendment. The other amendment would modify the Gingrich Casey substitute to delete the provisions in the bill that increase the rates for the PLUS loan program and reduce the amount of money that a parent can borrow. Mr. Chairman. Mr. I'd, Linda. I'd just like to make one comment. I, it, it seems to me that it is patently unfair to ask those folks who can't afford to go to college and leave high school and go to work and begin to try and save money to raise a family and, and buy a house to subsidize through their taxes. Some young person who goes to college gets an interest-free loan during college doesn't want to begin paying the loan off till six months after they leave college and subsidize their taxes for that six months period of time. It just seems to me it's reasonable in my judgment that the fortunate ones to go to college, which we, we know from all studies will make significantly larger incomes over their lifespan than those who don't. And we subsidize their interests through college. It seems to me they ought to pay interest on it, but particularly after they get out of college and they have a six month grace period, and I strongly oppose this amendment. I, I think that's a pretty good argument, I think, but the problem is we don't get a chance to make that argument. What I do is I, I offer the amendment to the bill to debate it. I thought I just did. You did. You did. But it's not going to be debated. It's not going to be talked about. It's just going to be eliminated. Okay. Okay. Chairman. You've heard the arguments. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. All opposed, Aye. nay, no. and the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments to the uh, resolution? Mr. Uh, yeah. Roll call. I'd like to have a roll call. I'd like to have a roll call. I'm sorry. The gentleman asked for a roll call. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Willis? No. Mr. Willis votes no. Mr. Dreyer? No. Mr. Dreyer votes no. Mr. Gass? No. Mr. Gass votes no. Mr. Leonard? No. Mr. Leonard votes no. Mr. Price? No. Mr. Price votes no. Mr. Diaz Ballard? No. Mr. Diaz Ballard votes no. Mr. McGinnis? No. Mr. McGinnis votes no. Mr. Walpole? No. Walpole votes no. Mr. Mobley? Yes. Mobley votes yes. Mr. Bielens? Yes. Mr. Bielens votes yes. Mr. Frost? Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon votes no. Clerk will announce the results. 48, 9, And the amendments are not agreed to. Are there further amendments yes. to the resolution? Mr. Frost. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the rule. The amendment would modify the substitute to delete the part of the bill that would allow firms to raid assets from pension funds. This provision allows businesses to dip into pension funds for virtually any purpose, including debt incurred during a corporate buyout of another company. Current law protects these vital pension funds from such a corporate looting. This is just one more example of robbing from the lower and middle class to help the wealthy. Let's strip this irresponsible language from the bill. You've heard the gentleman's uh, amendment. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment will say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. No. Nay. And the amendment is not agreed to. Roll call, please. Roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Quillen? No. Mr. Quillen votes no. Mr. Dreyer? No. Mr. Dreyer votes no. Mr. Goss? No. Mr. Goss votes no. Mr. Linder? No. Mr. Linder votes no. Mr. Price? No. Mr. Price, no. Mr. Price no. votes no. Mr. Price votes no. Mr. Price Continue. Uh, Mr. McGinnis? No. Mr. McGinnis votes no. Mr. Walpole? No. Walton votes no. Mr. Mobley? Yes. Mobley votes yes. Mr. Bielens? Yes. Mr. Bielens votes yes. Mr. Frost? Yes. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon votes no. Clerk will announce the results. 48, 8, 8. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the rule. Mr. Mobley. This amendment would modify the substitute to delete the repeal of the Service Contract Act. For 30 years... <clears throat> 
This law has protected <coughs> pardon me, wages for government contract service workers in primarily low-wage occupations. Most of the one million workers covered today are minority and female. This provision saves no money and will violate the Byrd Rule in the Senate. Repealing this law would destroy this very important safety net for these employees and why uh, so we can give a tax break once again to the richest in our society. You've uh, heard the, uh, the gentleman uh, state that this is probably in violation of the Byrd Rule, uh, so it probably will be knocked out over there. If it is, uh, we won't have to worry about it. I would urge a no vote. Clerk, uh, the, uh, all those in favor of the amendment will say aye. Aye. All those opposed, nay. No. And the amendment is not agreed to. Roll call, Mr. Chairman. Roll call is requested. Clerk, will call the roll again. Uh, Mr. Quillen? Mr. Quillen votes no. Mr. Dreyer? No. Mr. Dreyer votes no. Mr. Goss? No. Mr. Goss votes no. Mr. Goss votes no. Mr. Goss votes no. Mr. Goss votes no. Lender votes no, Ms. Price. Yeah. Ms. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz Villar. No. Mr. Diaz Villar votes no, Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. McGinnis votes no, Mr. Walpole. No. Mr. Walpole votes no, Mr. Mobley. Yes. Mobley votes yes, Mr. Bielans. Yes. Mr. Bielans votes yes, Mr. Frost. Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes, Mr. Hall. Yes. Mr. Hall votes yes, Chairman Solid. No. Chairman Solid votes no. And uh, the clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine nays. The amendment is not agreed to. Would the clerk uh, count up how many roll call votes we've had while we're, we're entertaining the nest? I know, I know. Four. I just like to know how many. All right. oh. I think you've just broken another record. Oh, I but, know. Uh, 26. Oh. 26. I hope that doesn't mean we're going <laughs> to leave and come back in a half an hour with another member. Well, I'm uh, tempted very much to, uh, to uh, you know, just to recess until uh, five minutes to 12, but uh, we won't. You may continue, sir. Okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, I move that the rule be amended by adding, adding the amendments on block number 41 and 42. All right. And ask the amendments be given the appropriate okay, making some progress here now. Okay. You heard the gentleman's uh, amendments. Uh, all those in favor oh, say aye. Oh, you haven't. Oh, all right. Go ahead. All those in favor say aye. No. Yeah, Not necessary unless you want to. Let me read them, huh? We did read them. We, we just read them. Chairman, I have an amendment You're? to the rule. I'll do it quick. My amendment would strike oh, wait a minute. Which one are you reading now, sir? 41. 41 in block. And what's the other one? All right. Never mind. We'll let it go. go okay. Ahead. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed, nay, and the amendments are not agreed to. Are there, roll call, uh, roll call is requested. Clerk will call the roll. Down to our last two, huh? No. Dreyer votes no, Mr. Goss. Mr. Goss votes no, Mr. Linder. No. Mr. Linder votes no, Mr. Price. No. Mr. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz Villar. No. Mr. Diaz Villar votes no, Mr. Kenneth. No. Mr. Kenneth votes no, Mr. Walthold. No. Mr. Walthold votes no, Mr. Mobley. Yes. Mobley votes yes, Mr. Bielans. Yes. Mr. Bielans votes yes, Mr. Frost. Yes. Frost votes yes, Mr. Hall. Yes. Paul votes yes, Chairman Solomon. No. Chairman Solomon votes no. And then the clerk will announce. What are we doing? Quick will announce the results. You, Four yeas, nine nays. You wouldn't let me. You wouldn't let me explain it. <laughs> okay. Uh, the uh, amendments are not agreed to. Are there further amendments? Mr. Chairman, I have two more amendments. Mr. Mokley, what are they? This one is. Uh, I move that the rule be amended to extend the time for debate on the coalition substitute from one hour to two hours. That's a very simple. Mr. Amendment. Chairman. Yes. Might be heard for just Mr. 20 Mr. seconds on this. Mr. Bielinson is recognized. Because we listened to some, thanks so much. Um, we listened to great length to these folks from the coalition, and I feel very strongly about this, although I suppose you may not be able to, to do it. We, we have plenty of time tomorrow and still end up by 6 o'clock or so, which is not asking a lot. We won't be meeting on Friday or over the weekend. Uh, but if, if, we, if we allow the coalition alternative just, uh, just one hour of debate on the substitute, then they only have half an hour to make their case. And the fact of the matter is, I think, I think it's fair to say, Although it's presumptuous, I mean, you certainly don't have to admit it or agree. Uh, but if, if we if we had a if we had a secret vote, I think this is the one that would that would that would pass. This is the one which would balance the budget by making, in seven years as well, by making much, much sizably smaller cuts in some of the major programs that are of concern to all of us on both sides of the aisle, uh, basically by by not cutting taxes. And I just wish we'd give them an, a decent opportunity to make their case. Uh, I think two two hours would be fair and. It's good if you make this substitute in order, but it's the only one that is being made in order. It'd be nice to have some more discussion on it, frankly. Mr. Chairman. Thanks. Well, Mr. Mr. Uh, if the gentleman would withhold just for a moment. Uh, the truth of the matter is that I, uh, I sympathize with the, uh, with the uh, conservative Democrat coalition. Uh, I think they should be given ample time. However, we have uh, made sizable concessions uh, in allowing for three hours of debate to take place even before we issue this rule and start the the uh, official debate tomorrow, and, and uh, I watched a lot of that debate, 
uh, from the various offices we were in while we were negotiating this rule today. And uh, the, uh, those that were uh, sponsors of this resolution, of this amendment, uh, uh, did partake in that debate uh, with considerable time. So because we have given them three hours the, uh, tonight and we have moved the debate time up and given an extra hour for tomorrow anyway on general debate, I just don't see how we could possibly squeeze it in. How much are we giving on general debate? Excuse me. Three hours tomorrow, yeah, and I they've thought, had three hours already, no, and they did participate in the uh, in the debate and get their points. Let across. me say just one more thing, and then I'll sure. be quiet. The, our friend, the, the chairman, said, probably not quite correctly, but but you know, with a little bit of excitement there, as he gets excited about stuff he he likes, that this may be the most important bill that Congress ever votes on. I think you said that at the early yes, the earliest part of this morning. If that's the case, Mr. Very chairman, we ought to have. I understand that. That's fine. Um, we ought to have a decent amount of debate. We're going to end up by 5 o'clock or so tomorrow. You know, it's just Thursday. And if it is that important a bill, and it is, and here is a, a, a legitimate, you know, alternative to it, I, I would urge our members to give us an extra hour of debate on it specifically. I, it was good of you to give the three hours today from 4 to 7 or 5 to 8, whatever it was, but it was kind of lost, you know, to a certain extent, to too. We're going to end just a minute. We had one more. That's all. Anyway, I would, urge, uh, uh, I would urge you to give us an extra, those folks, an extra hour on this alternative. Thanks. Well, the gentleman's uh, points are well taken. However, all those in favor of the uh, amendment say aye. 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 And all opposed nay. Oh. Nay. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments? The gentleman has one last I amendment. I have one last amendment. Okay. What is it? Well, I want to roll, roll call on the last one, first of all. Well, I wish the gentleman would make his request timely, but uh, we would certainly honor his request anyway. Well, I, uh, I, I the clerk will call the roll. I didn't see anybody <laughs> jumping on the bus. No. Well, no. votes no, Mr. Dreyer. No. Mr. Dreyer yeah. votes no, Mr. Goss. Mr. Goss votes no, Mr. Lender. No. Mr. Lender votes no, Ms. Price. He hasn't changed the bit. Ms. Price votes no, Mr. Diaz Villar. No. Mr. Diaz Villar votes no, Mr. McGinnis. No. Mr. McGinnis votes no. Mrs. Walpole. No. Walpole votes no, Mr. Mobley. Yes. Mobley votes yes, Mr. Bielans. Yes. Mr. Bielans votes yes, Mr. Frost. Yes. Mr. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Hall votes yes. Chairman Solomon? No. Chairman Solomon votes no. And the uh, clerk will announce the results. Four yeas, nine nays. And the amendment is not agreed to. Uh, are there further amendments? This is the moment you've been waiting for, Mr. Chairman, after oh. being so patient with us on the side. Uh -huh. uh, this refers to the three-fifth tax waiver. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment to the rule. The amendment would strike the waiver of Clause 5C of Rule 21, which requires that any bill containing a federal income tax rate increase must be passed by not less than three-fifths of those members voting. The Gingrich bill raises taxes on 20 million American working families by modifying the earned income tax credit. The Gingrich bill makes those who invest venture capital in qualified jobs creating small businesses pay even a higher rate of federal income tax than they would under existing laws. And there are plenty of other examples, Mr. Chairman, of tax rate increases in the substitute. You folks promised before last month, November, if Republicans are elected, we won't raise your taxes. As soon as you won, you started backtracking. Did we say no tax increases? Well, we meant no tax rate increases. So on opening day, with all the pomp and circumstances and ceremony, you made a solemn promise. We won't raise income tax rates without a three-fifth vote. Then you tried narrowing down the interpretation of the rule. Did we really say any federal income tax rate increase? Maybe we should limit it further. There was an exchange of letters for a few months about whether the contract with America tax bill increased tax rates under the rules. And to sum up even under the narrowest interpretation of the rule, the House parliamentarian suggests your own contract with America tax bill may have raised income tax rates. And even Speaker Gingrich admitted that the chair's ruling did not seem either satisfactory or overly compelling. So I'd like to put those letters in the record at this point. The next tax bill, may I, Mr. Chairman, put the... Without objection, by all means. Okay. Yeah. The next tax bill on the floor, the Medicare Savings Bill, you waived the 350 requirement and here you go again, waving the rule one more time. So here's a chance to say that you will not renege on your promises. Here's a chance to say that we are serious about not raising taxes. Mr. Chairman. If the gentleman would withhold just for one minute. Uh, let me say to my good friend, Mr. Moakley, um, I spoke to the sponsor of that, uh, of that rule change. Uh, it happened to be Jerry Solomon. 
And I would like to explain. Alabama, America. I would like to explain the legislative intent of same that. Day uh, wrote, same day uh, you wrote a letter to earlier in the oh, year. Oh, that rule. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to sit right down and write myself a letter. Let me uh, let me explain the legislative intent of that uh, that rule change. Back in 1986, uh, a number of us at this uh, on this dais voted for something uh, called the. Uh, the 1986, what was it? Tax Reform Act. Tax Reform Act. Some of us voted. It was no. the biggest mistake of my life for having voted for that. Now, let me tell you what was in that bill. First of all, it eliminated many of the tax brackets. That wasn't the mistake. That was the good part of the bill. And Ronald Reagan and I and others were conned into voting for that bill uh, because we wanted to eliminate the tax brackets. But lo and behold, in order to get it, we had to agree to all these other issues that were in the bill, like passive loss, okay? We eliminated that for real estate. You voted no, Marty? You were smart. But uh, we almost wrecked the entire economy for years to come. Yeah. So it pays you to make sure you know what's in legislation. But uh, just to get back to the issue, uh, the original intent of that legislation is to not to increase tax brackets ever again. And that's what it is, and that's why uh, we want to uh, waive this rule here Mr. today. Mr. Chairman, let me, just, Mr. Let me just point out that the Medicare reform had no tax rate increases in it. It did have, it did have a continuing 68.5% subsidy of Part B premiums, which have been called premiums for 30 years, and we're beginning to call rates on the floor last Thursday. Um, but it did give an opportunity for you folks from your side of the aisle to claim it was a tax rate increase, increase and get an hour's debate on it. Uh, there are no rate increases in this bill. There are some changes in EITC. There are some changes in deductibilities. But there are no blanket rate increases in this bill. However, there is no question in my mind that sometime during the course of the debate, someone will make the argument, the parliamentary, parliamentary argument, that there's a rate increase and it deserves an hour's debate. And for that reason, this waiver is not only uh, not only important, but uh, uh, absolutely Mr. Ne Bobek. necessary. Actually, the point of order is not the time to an hour debate. And if the gentleman well, agrees with me that this is not a tax increase, you have nothing to worry about. Well, no, that is not entirely true because there is a, a gentleman named Mr. Skaggs from Colorado that uh, every time that this is left open in the air when there is a question in his mind, he brings the point of order and carries on on the floor for an hour. He even brought a court case against us uh, uh, for uh, violating you, this rule. So this is just protection so that we can uh, get on with the people's business and finish you, it Mr. tomorrow. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, you pass this great may. new rule and you waive it every time it's applicable. Because it doesn't deal with tax brackets. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Well, then it's not applicable, so Mr. don't worry about Mr. it. Mr. Chairman, so you don't need to waive it. Excuse me. Um, Mr. Frost. I would suggest to the chairman that in, uh, because I was in, involved in doing this for about uh, 12 years for our caucus, I was the chairman of our committee that drafted rules changes. Right. Uh, I would suggest to the, the chairman that he be very precise in uh, future so rules that he drafts uh, and submits to the, uh, at the beginning yeah. of an or and the first day of the organizing session of the new Congress. Because what's happened is people on our side were confused and they went to the parliamentarian and the parliamentarian said that the rule drafted by Mr. Solomon in fact would be invoked in this instance mm -hmm. so I perhaps Jerry you drafted it more broadly than you originally intended and uh, which, we, just, which we I probably would, did I, I would, would urge you in the in the future to be to be very precise and narrow in the drafting of rules Mr. Dreyer who Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, who, Mr. Dreyer who chairs the uh, committee that is going to revise the uh, uh, the rules of the House uh, and myself uh, serving on that committee certainly intend to take that up as the first order of business uh, this coming year. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, let me suggest that I think this Mr. rule needs looking at, but let's just call this a Solomon waiver. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. A solemn waiver, huh? Uh, Mr. 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 Dreyer is going to revise the rules of the House and yourself. Yes. Did you really mean that? <laughs> <laughs> Did I really mean it? Well, certainly I really meant it. Right. Okay, got it. <laughs> 13 hours is a long time. I know. In that order. Clerk will. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, all those in favor of the, uh, the Mokley Amendment uh, to clarify the Solomon Rule will say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. 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 And the amendment is not agreed to. Uh,
A roll call is requested? Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> I want to get that revision. Kurt will call the roll. Pro provision. Mr. Cullen? No. Cullen votes no. Mr. Dreyer no. 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 votes no. Mr. Goss? No. Mr. Goss votes no. Mr. Linder? No. Mr. Linder votes no. Ms. Price? No. Ms. Price votes no. Mr. diaz Ballard. No. Mr. diaz Ballard votes no. Mr. McKinnon? No. Mr. McKinnon votes no. Mrs. Walt holds? No. Mrs. Walt holds. Walt holds. Votes no. Mr. Mowgli? Yes. Mowgli votes yes. Mr. Beelins? Yes. Mr. Beelins votes yes. Mr. Frank? Yes. yes. Frost votes yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mr. Hall votes Put you up, Jerry. Yeah. Solomon? No. Solomon votes no. And the uh, amendment is not, uh, the clerk will announce the results. Uh, four yeas, nine nays. And the amendment is not agreed to. Are there further amendments Chairman, or discussion? I think we need a recording a vote in, in recording. We just had it. On the motion. On the motion. We haven't had that. We didn't call it yet. Well, we haven't called it yet. Oh, I thought you were oh. getting ready to wrap it up. The gentleman is premature. I am premature. <laughs> and you're being revised. Uh, since there are no further amendments or discussion to the uh, motion by the gentleman from Tennessee that was made some several hours ago, uh, we will now proceed to reporting the rule to the floor. All those in favor of reporting this rule on this uh, meritorious piece of legislation will say aye. Aye. And all those opposed, no. No. And the amendment, the uh, resolution is reported. Roll call, Mr. Chairman. And a roll call is requested. The clerk will call the roll. Willis? Aye. Willis votes aye, Mr. Dreyer. Aye. Mr. Dreyer votes aye, Mr. Goss. Aye. Mr. Goss votes aye, Mr. Aye. Mr. Linder votes aye, Mr. Price. And if Mr. Price votes aye, Mr. Diaz Villar. Yes. Mr. Diaz Villar votes yes, Mr. Guinness. Yes. Mr. Guinness votes yes. Mrs. Walcolds? Aye. Mrs. Walcolds votes aye, Mr. Mobley? No. Mobley votes no. Mr. Bielans? No. Mr. Bielans votes no. Mr. Croft? No. Mr. Croft votes no. Mr. Hall? No. Hall votes no. Chairman Solomon? Aye. Chairman Solomon votes aye. And the uh, clerk will announce the results. Nine yeas, four nays. And the resolution is reported to the floor, and caring for the majority will be the chairman, Mr. Solomon. Caring for the minority will be the able legislator from California, Mr. Bielanson. Mr. Bielanson will carry for the minority. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, concludes the uh, business for this evening. Uh, there is a possibility we may have emergency meetings tomorrow. Uh, uh, we don't expect to, but nevertheless, I... Uh, wanted to make sure that we're all going to be around. Uh, this rule will appear on the floor at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, and thank you all for coming. This meeting is adjourned. Yes. Ten one minutes aside? I haven't heard exactly what's expected. Ten aside. Whip meeting at nine. At nine. The whip meeting is at nine. We'll be out sometime on nine twenty, nine thirty. Game over. They were talking about uh, ten on a side, but I don't know if that still holds. What we've been seeing this evening is the Rules Committee finishing work on its recommendation for debate on a budget reconciliation bill. Some debate on the bill took place on the floor today. This rules proposal sets the course for tomorrow's debate. The rules package now goes to the House floor. Shortly, we'll see the filing of the rule on the floor, which must lay overnight. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., members will debate and vote on that package. If approved, debate can continue through the day and a vote is expected by tomorrow afternoon. Work is now underway on the second C-SPAN school bus. Scheduled to hit the road in 